us uh, here. So he will be sharing my presentation, Dr. Prachi or uh, Alok. So uh, please uh, share your screen, uh, project the presentation so that we can go ahead with the presentation on ICT initiatives. Yes, sir, I'm project. Yes, so this is the presentation on uh, digital education initiatives and the way forward that we all have to um, adhere to, we all have to cater to. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, orient you to the uh, mission of Central Institute of Educational Technology and CRT so that you understand the context in which we as CIT and CRT work and wherever there is a possibility and dem demand and need to handhold you, we can handhold you in these areas. So uh, the uh, very first uh, mission of CIT and CRT is to promote utilization of educational technology and which is uh, via radio, TV, satellite communication and cyber media, either separate or in combination and its appropriate use to enhance learning and improve productivity in classrooms and schools. So we go via children and also uh, teachers and teacher educators, because these are the three entities which are there in educational system and without enhancing uh, and improving their productivity, classrooms cannot be uh, productive and, um, and the, uh, 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 fruitful. Then uh, achieve excellence in research, design, development, and production of educational technology resources and software for children and teachers, uh, including parents. So this is another um, mandate that a CIT work towards. Then contribute to teacher education through the convergence of appropriate technologies. So we... Uh, uh, contribute to teacher education in the aspects which relates to educational technology because we are a technology institution. Then uh, uh, build capacities of teachers and teacher educators for quality improvement in school education and disseminate digital resources through portal, apps, broadcast, and non-broadcast mode. And you might be aware about uh, Diksha, Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing, which is a portal through which we uh, now disseminate most of our digital content. Apart from this, we also have uh, other portals and app as well. So in the course of this uh, presentation, you will know uh, all those uh, components as well. So after, uh, after the end of this presentation, if there is time, I may uh, um, uh, take you through a quiz based on this presentation. So be alert and listen carefully so that you can participate in the quiz as well. Uh, we, we already have a quiz based on this presentation, Kahoot quiz. Check. Huh. So, mm -hmm. pe check kar lena. Uh, in the meanwhile, you can check so that we can have that quiz. So we will be having quiz at the end of this presentation. Then act as a nodal uh, resource, uh, uh, disseminate digital resources through portal apps. I have already covered this point. Act as a nodal resource center on educational technology for school education. Uh, media softwares and implementation of national level policy programs and schemes. Then to advise, assist and coordinate academic and technical activities of ET and ICT cells 
of SIETs, SCRTs, um, etc. And uh, you can see at the bottom that uh, we cater to the need of 1.5 million students, uh, schools, that is 15 lakhs schools, 85 million teachers, uh, uh, that means 85 lakhs uh, teachers, and 260 million uh, students, uh, that is 26 crore students. So this is the kind of statistics that we <clears throat> work for. Next slide, please. So uh, these are some of the issues and challenges when it comes to the implementation of uh, technology in education. So diversity is one uh, of the challenge. I also mentioned uh, about this in my uh, opening remarks. So um, how uh, we are impacted by diversity. If you reflect most of the content which is available um, online, which is available through internet is in English. But India is a multilingual society and we need to have content in multiple languages, especially for primary courses in all the uh, education policies, it has been recommended that education of young children should be in their mother tongue. And until and unless we have quality digital content in uh, their mother tongue, we cannot uh, realize the learning outcome that we have planned for them. So uh, diversity, uh, I have given only one example of diversity. Apart from that, there are many phases of diversity that we uh, have here also we have uh, around um, yeah we have eight states and UTs uh, present and they are uh, we can say culturally different the kind of languages they speak they are different in that ways also uh, the kind of ge geographical setting they are located in is also one uh, kind of diversity that we have. So uh, India has cultural, uh, linguistic, uh, then geographical diversity. There is diversity in climatic conditions that we live in. There is diversity in the kind of crafts, agricultural practices uh, we practice. So this diversity is multifarious until and unless we have local specific digital content, we cannot meet uh, the uh, this uh, challenge which emerged uh, emerges due to the uh, diverse conditions that we live in, that India is. Then large scale is another uh, issue which we face. We talk about the education system of Finland, Japan, and other uh, countries which we uh, think are uh, far ahead than us as far as um, education is concerned and other parameters of development is concerned. So uh, for those countries, it is very easier to implement whatever changes are brought in on day-to-day -day basis and on, uh, on a periodic basis. But Catering to the need of scaling the uh, large scale that we have, I already mentioned in the light, uh, last slide that we uh, have 15 lakh schools in our country, 85 lakh uh, teachers and 26 crore students. So scaling whatever uh, changes are being made in the arena of education, uh, is uh, a difficult and challenging task, though it is not impossible. And technology is one of the rescue, one of the medium through which we can um, scale up. So in this training program also, you can see that, uh, I can see there are 114 participants sitting at different locations. And we are sitting at Delhi and some of my participants are, and resource persons are also sitting at different locations. So being present at different locations also through uh, technology, we are connected and we are able to 
talk to each other, we are able to take forward the learning uh, and the achievement of objective of this training program. So we, we are scaling up this training to uh, eight states at, uh, in, in this particular training program, uh, sitting at different locations. So that has been possible because of technology only. So uh, uh, during pandemic time also, the NISHTA training you might be aware of, we did it through online mode and that is how the uh, education of teachers, the uh, professional development of teachers could uh, just uh, go forward. We also harnessed the uh, potential of broadcast technologies and conducted a lot of webinars and we are continuing them uh, so that learning can uh, 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 just uh, uh, go learning can spread uh, across uh, different locations of our country. So uh, that is how um, a large scale is a challenge, but we can uh, meet this challenge by, uh, by uh, judicious use of uh, technology. Though uh, Everything cannot be done through technologies, but we can achieve a lot through uh, technology as far as scaling up is concerned. Then infrastructure uh, remains another challenge that we face. In this training program also, I can, uh, I, I'm, I'm also looking at the mm, uh, chats that you are putting in the chat box, that some people are facing challenge of internet connectivity. Uh, at uh, their locations. Uh, so uh, the infrastructure is a challenge. They don't have that high speed internet, maybe because of the geographical challenges that they are facing or maybe through any other challenge which is related to infrastructure, like not having a good bandwidth. So, uh, and we don't have uniform infrastructure in our um, country as far as ICT infrastructure is concerned and other infrastructures also. Though in the countries where there is a small number of schools, a small number of teachers, small number of students, that uniformity can be maintained in the availability of infrastructure as well. But this... Uh, uh, all these challenges have been recognized in NEP 2020 also, and maybe uh, the government is working towards it in a targeted uh, manner. But still, uh, some facets of some aspects of the, the uh, these challenges will uh, remain. They will not go overnight. Then technologies, competencies of teachers and teacher educators is another uh, challenge that we have. And uh, competency enhancement of teachers and teacher educators is also very important to cater to. Then quality digital resources. Uh, having quality digital resources is also one of the challenge. So we need to have quality digital resources that too in multiple languages. Then uh, convergence of efforts. So we keep working in silos in a big country like India. So they, this happens uh, many a times. But convergence of efforts is uh, very important so that resources uh, in uh, the form of human resources and uh, infrastructural resources are not wasted. So I can set an example for convergence of efforts, uh, which is Diksha. Diksha is, uh, has been envisaged as one nation, one digital uh, platform. So uh, although this is one digital platform, but it is not controlled from center, controlled from uh, one uh, person or one place, all these states and UTs are also there on Diksha. They have their own spaces which they can use uh, in any which manner they want to uh, use their spaces to achieve the objectives of education, to implement anything which is local specific, 
which they uh, feel that they want to utilize this platform for. So it is one example of convergence of efforts. Now you don't need to have your own digital platform, but you have a national level platform, a centralized platform, which is also federated because uh, it is a democratized platform where you have freedom to work in which manner you want to. So there are some possibilities, capabilities also on Diksha, like you can have energized textbooks. So you can have, if you have your own state specific textbooks, you can have it on your tenant. You have your own digital content, you can have on your tenant. If you want to, uh, you want to have specific need based teacher trainings for your states and UTs, you can use this digital platform for uh, those uh, trainings as, as well for the dissemination of those courses as well. So like that, uh, convergence of efforts can be done. And these convergence, this convergence can also be done um, as far as uh, the digital content creation is uh, concerned. If there is quality content on one topic, which is also suitable to have in your own states and UT, so you can dub it, you can um, uh, have subtitles on it, and can use the same digital content for uh, uh, for everyone to use. So this is also one example of convergence of efforts. You need not to reinvent the wheel uh, all over again, but whatever is available can be customized so that efforts are not wasted. Next slide, please. Kab tak hai ye? Kitta time hai? 11.50. Thik hai. So these are some of the first areas of NEP 2020 as far as educational technology is concerned. There are two chapters in uh, on educational technology in NEP 2020, chapter 23 and chapter 24. Please go through those chapters as well so that you can um, uh, understand better what we need to do in uh, the area of technology. Although uh, in this slide, you can see the first areas of uh, uh, technology implementation. So digital infrastructure, uh, the NEP talks about the development of digital infrastructure. I have already spoken about this aspect while uh, covering the previous slide. Then portals, apps, and tools. We also need to have portals, apps, and tools designed specifically for different purposes. But if we want to converge also, we uh, have to look at that convergence as well as have specific uh, apps and tools for specific purposes. Then digital resources, I've already spoken about digital resources, how it is important to have digital resources in multiple uh, languages uh, and um, the to meet the local specific needs. Then we need to harness uh, telecast and broadcast technology as well, uh, not only internet technology, but also telecast and broadcast technology. Then e-governance is another area that we need to uh, cater to because everything cannot be done uh, physically. We need to enhance our e-governance also where we can do many uh, tasks online, uh, like having... Uh, EE office and disseminating all communication, doing all um, communication through E office is one of the example of E governance. Then online assessment and examination is another aspect which has been highlighted in NEP 2020 because during the time of pandemic, it was realized that. Uh, uh, online assessment and examination is a big challenge that um, was there because we can um, take the education forward anyhow and we uh, were forcefully switched on to technology to impart education. But how to uh, do 
assessment and examination through online mode so that uh, the learning loss is not uh, faced by children is uh, one other challenge. And NEP talks about uh, devising uh, methods, devising technology, devising techniques for online assessment and examination as well. Then building digital competencies of students is another um, recommendation of NEP 2020, another highlight of NEP 2020. Although we know that our children are digital natives, they are born in the era of digital education or a digital world. Mm, uh, and uh, those who are migrant to technology face more uh, challenges in handling technology. But children need to um, be trained in cyber safety and security because many a times we hear news, we hear such instances where our children are vulnerable. They are at risk in the digital world. So they need to be uh, trained. They need to be taught how to keep themselves safe and secure in cyber spaces. And we adults also need to learn until and unless we adults learn that we cannot make our children safe. And that is why we have kept a session on cyber safety and security also in this um, five days program. Then content technology pedagogy integration is uh, another area which we need to work towards. And for that, we need to have intensive research in technology, what kind of digital uh, pedagogies are there and how to blend content pedagogy and technology in a judicious way to enhance the learning experience of uh, children. Then use of assistive technologies is another area which emerged in NEP 2020. So we need to uh, explore various uh, assistive technologies to help uh, children with special needs. Then uh, capacity building of teachers and teacher educators is another highlight of NEP 2020. And this training is also um, geared towards that uh, highlight of NEP 2020. Then laying down standards for everything that we do is also important because we have to implement is to a large scale. So we need to have standards of everything like e-content development, teacher training, how to uh, do online um, uh, how to develop online courses, standards need to be set for that. And uh, CIET being a national level organization is working towards it. We have developed two guidelines for e-content development and they set standards on e-content development. One is for uh, uh, digital content development, guidelines on digital content development for teachers and uh, teacher uh, for schools and teachers and another is for children with special needs what considerations to be taken care of while developing content for children with special needs uh, so uh, that is it then intensive research in et is also very important area that we need to uh, work towards so uh, 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 because this is an emerging area and technologies keep changing every now and then. It is a dynamic area. Education is also dynamic and technologies are also dynamic. They get redundant on periodic basis. So until and unless we do intensive research in technology, we cannot keep pace with the kind of development which are uh, there in the area of technology and how impactful various technologies uh, are. And uh, some far-sighted uh, researches can also be done in um, the area of technologies because uh, 
it has technologies have an disruptive uh, effect also so there are a lot of technologies which are disruptive we call them disruptive technologies for example uh, because of uh, the internet uh, or email enablement uh, using internet most of the services which were uh, taken care of by the post offices are now redundant. They are no more in use because now we use email for communication. We use other modes for communications. So, uh, so while uh, doing researches, we also need to uh, see uh, and understand the disruptive impact of technologies. In future, what else can come and what disruptive impact will happen because of those emerging and new technologies. So next slide, please. So these are some of the major digital initiatives which are uh, being uh, taken care of at national level. So one is PME Vidya, then Diksha, E Parchala under PM E Vidya NCRT is already catering to uh, 12 DTH channels. We have one DTH channel for each class. Then Diksha, you already know, it's a digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. It is being used as an CMS content management system and LMS learning management system for dissemination of courses. Then ePashala is a mobile app and all the NCRT textbooks are there and digital contents are there on ePashala. NIFTA is a, a training program designed for the holistic development of uh, school heads and teachers. Then Swayam where uh, all the PG courses, uh, it uh, it was envisaged to have all the PG courses on this uh, online platform called SWAM, all the MOOCs courses, massive open online courses. But NIOS and NCRT is also using this platform for school MOOCs uh, for the dissemination of <clears throat> massive open online courses uh, for school education. Then ICT curriculum is another initiative. ICT curriculum has been developed by uh, CIET and CRT, and it is also being implemented uh, on the states which um, uh, they demanded that. And it is for the <clears throat> competency development in educational technology for teachers and teacher educators. Next slide, please. Who is Amelia? Uh, then uh, PME Vidya, let us now learn in detail about each uh, of these initiatives. So this is about PME Vidya, which focuses on unification of efforts, enabling uh, multi-mode access to education. What are you saying? Let's see. Sorry for the interruption in between. Yes, so uh, PME Vidya uh, focuses on developing multi-channel learning continuum using television, radio, diksha, special e-content and online courses. So one class, one TV channel is uh, for TV. Then NCRT caters to uh, 400 uh, radio channels, our content uh, uh, is being disseminated through uh, 400 um, radio uh, channels. Then Diksha is One Nation, One Digital Platform, you all might be aware of. Then special e-content, so we are developing e-content for specially abled uh, children uh, also, and it, it also includes um, 
uh, it also includes um, audio books and also on the um, sign language videos then online courses for school education is another uh, area that um, ncrt cit and crt is working towards under pm e vidya so uh, yes so in this slide you can see uh, Uh, present status of PM e Vidya, 12 DTH TV channels, and you can see uh, how many video programs have been disseminated both in English and Hindi uh, medium for classes 1 to 12. Uh, 4,247 ISL programs have also been telecasted. Then 5,416 live shows has been done and um, uh, which covers the various activities which were reflected in alternative academic calendar. Then 9,422 contents were uh, reviewed by uh, NCRT, NIOS, NVS, uh, and um, the, utilizing the uh, potential of different states and UTs. So uh, you can also see uh, the um, number of uh, curriculum-based radio program which were broadcasted through 400 radio stations, which I have already mentioned. And we are also harnessing the potential of internet radio and Geo Savan mobile app. So uh, these are some of the, um, uh, the, the, this is the current status of PME Vidya. So you can see here the viewership details of these channels. Although we don't get TRP from the uh, DTH channels, but uh, we get it through Geo Savan mobile app. Whosoever is accesses these channels using Geo uh, TV mobile app, we get analytics for those. And based on uh, that, those analytics you can see for some reason class 7 pm evidya channel is viewed uh, most by our viewers and then you can uh, also see that the uh, utilization of class 10 and Ma'am, you are not audible. Uh, Ma'am is just got disconnected due to the interrupted internet. She will be joining soon. Sure. Let, let us resume uh, the presentation from here. So you can see uh, this is the feedback uh, mechanism that we adopt for getting feedback. So IVRS, email and WhatsApp groups are the feedback mechanism that we are uh, uh, using. And uh, these are some of the highlights uh, of using these uh, feedback mechanisms. And that is for uh, radio broadcast and TV broadcast. Next slide, please. Yes. So this is about Diksha. Diksha is a repository of open educational resources. What are uh, do we understand by open educational resources? We will be having a complete presentation on that. Then it's a collaborative platform. We have curriculum aligned content here. Then we get analytics also on various aspects. And it also gives multilingual support. Uh, currently, we have uh, contents in uh, 38 languages on Diksha. And uh, there is also a possibility of offline access of resources if we download them and use them. 
So they are freely downloadable resources. Then dedicated vertical for uh, Diksha. Uh, so please pay attention of all these knowledge because we will be having a quiz soon after the break. So I will give you some time to reflect and recall while having your tea so that you can undergo quiz uh, um, before we start the next session after the break. Then these are some of the dedicated verticals which are there on Diksha. Ko ye share bhi kar lena presentation WhatsApp group mein. Then uh, one is foundational literacy and numeracy. This vertical is for uh, FLN. Uh, and this is for the implementation of Nipun Bharat mission to acquire foundational literacy and numeracy by the end of class three. Then there is another vertical education for all, which is for adult education. Then uh, virtual lab, uh, the vertical is also there, which is uh, there, which disseminates lab experiments virtually. Then there is another vertical called Jadwi Pitara, which is for ECC, Early Childhood Care and Education. There are a lot of resources for ECCE in Jadwi Pitara. So there are two more verticals in pipeline. One is for vocational education and another is for children with special needs. And soon we will be having uh, two more verticals uh, on vocational education and for children with special needs. So these are some of the highlights of Diksha, what we have on Diksha for uh, specific purposes. Then bridging of physical and digital world by energizing textbooks is another initiative done by uh, CIET and CRT. So uh, we all know that we have QR coded textbooks on Diksha and chapter-based uh, QR codes are there and chapter-based digital contents are aligned to these QR codes. If we scan the QR code, we get the resources aligned to the specific chapters. Next slide, please. So these are uh, some of the varieties of digital contents that we have on Diksha. One is energized textbooks, then assessment questions, infographics, e-courses, guidelines and handbooks, videos, including ISL videos, then interactive and immersive content, then audios and worksheets. So uh, these are the variety, please see them. You may have questions on this uh, slide as well. So uh, these uh, are um, uh, some of the glimpses of e-contents which are based on UDL, Universal Design of Learning, which provide stimulus for our different senses and caters to the need of different type of learners that we have in our classroom. Some are uh, learners are visual learners, some are audio learners, some are kinesthetics learners, and some uh, learn best by using all these senses. Some learn by uh, doing and using all these senses. So you can see uh, the uh, uh, glimpses of uh, videos, maybe in the next session I uh, can show you one uh, such videos where text is also there, audio is also there, we can uh, listen also, we can see the text and we can also learn uh, seeing the sign language as well. So uh, so these e-contents are UDL based e-content. Then NCRT has liberated Diksha to enable coherent access. Whatever is being telecasted through DTS channels are also made available on Diksha. This is one aspect of coherent uh, access. And another aspect is that if we have one um, TV in an household, but have uh, two or more children who are uh, to watch that television. So it is not possible to watch two channels through one TV sets. So that is why uh, every program which is telecasted on uh, through this DTA channel also have QR code so that one child can uh, watch the uh, 
content of his or her class using a mobile device. They can scan the QR of the program which is being run currently and watch the program on mobile. So one child can watch the TV and another child can watch it, uh, uh, his or her channel through the app. So that is how coherent access is being, uh, uh, is being made enabled. Next, please. So uh, the physical is another area that NCRT is working uh, towards. So we are bridging the physical and digital world by energizing the textbooks through QR code. That is one. And there are a lot of content diagrams in textbooks. We are using diagrams, but the concept can be made uh, best uh, clarified using uh, using. Uh, the 3D visualization of the concept. So all those 3D visualizations are made possible by uh, embedding the augmented reality into our textbooks. So we have worked uh, for class 9th and 10th textbooks where a lot of uh, diagrams can be visualized uh, in a 3D formats when we scan, uh, scan them through AR app, which is uh, developed by NCRT. Next slide, please. So Vidya Dhan is another initiative that um, is being, uh, uh, that is also integrated with Diksha. So there is a Vidya Dhan capability where the content developers can uh, upload their content. So if you uh, also have developed a considerable amount of digital content and you want to place them on the Iksha, so we can uh, create a project using Vidya Dhan there and you can upload your content. And after undergoing a review process, these uh, digital content may be, can be made visible for uh, public. So this is about Vidya Dhan. Next. So micro improvement is another uh, capabilities. If you uh, use uh, this, uh, you can uh, track whatever you are doing. You can create a project over here and whatever task you have for that particular uh, uh, thing or task that you are doing. Uh, for example, if you are doing periodic assessment of your children, you can keep track of that periodic assessment using micro improvement. Recently, we have organized Vidya Amrit Mohasav using micro improvement ability, where teachers submitted their projects on uh, through uh, these initiatives on innovative ped pedagogies, which are evaluated uh, at national level and now we are in the process of disseminating uh, uh, certificates to the winners. Next. So these are uh, glimpses of Vidya Amrit Mohasav across India. Next, please. So this is Vidya Samiksha Kendra, uh, which was launched on 29th July 2022 at CIT and CRT. And this is for data-driven decision-making. And you can see on uh, my um, right the programs which we have in our Vidya Samiksha Kendra, uh, that is digital textbooks. Um, uh, 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 this is about Diksha. ETBs, the data of the Iksha ETBs uh, comes, then NISTA, micro improvements, PM portion, National Achievement Survey, UDICE, PGI, Nipun Bharat, NCRT quiz, and National Curriculum Framework. And uh, we have added one more program to it that is about PM Shri School. And Vidya Samiksha Kendra is for data driven decision making. Uh, the, for example, we have implemented NISHTA. So we can see uh, the data of NISHTA implementation across different states and uh, UTs. If we click on to NISHTA, we will get how many teachers in each of the NISHTA program have been enrolled, how many have been certified. Uh, 
so that gaps can be identified and we work in a targeted manner to bridge or fill those gaps. If a certificate no, are not issued to all those who have completed program, so we can initiate the dissemination of certificates. If courses are not done by all the teachers, we can report the state and UT that uh, all the teachers uh, in the uh, state or union territories have not done the NISTA program. These many teachers are yet to do the program so that state can take those uh, decisions on how to implement or take uh, it forward further. Next. So uh, NCRT is also handholding different states and UTs and sharing the starter pack, uh, that is software, which is CQ for uh, uh, putting their Vidya Samiksha Kendra on place. So as uh, up till now, we have uh, shared the starter pack with 23 states and UTs, and you can see the list over here. Uh, of all those 23 states and UTs, three states have done uh, their uh, Vidya Samiksha Kendra independently. They um, uh, decided to have their own uh, own uh, software for establishment of Vidya Samiksha Kendra. Next slide, please. So uh, this is uh, the one another initiative. Uh, which is uh, experiential learning center, which is established in CIT and CRT for the demonstration of newer technologies. So all the new technologies, uh, not all, but some of the new technologies have been demonstrated here. And whosoever visits a CIT and CRT, be it students, teachers, or teacher educators, they visit our experiential learning hub to get exposure of the newer technologies which are demonstrated here. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is ePartshala mobile app, which I mentioned. So you can install it and uh, just explore it. Next slide. So these are, uh, this is the branding of ePartshala and we have developed these many apps. Deeksha, ePartshala, Nishtha, PM eVidya, NAS, ePartshala scanner app, then S, uh, SP Mauritius app, which we developed for Mauritius, NCF app, Dishank, and Prashas. So these are some of the apps that have been developed by CIT and CRT. Next slide. Yeah, this is uh, the uh, dashboard of Prashas app, which is for the uh, universal screening of disabilities which uh, exist among students, so that early detec detection of disabilities can be done. So this is about Prashas app. Next, please. Uh, this is the dashboard of Prashas. Next, please. So uh, these are a continuous professional development program which um, are implemented by CIT and CRT. One is NISHTA, where 42 lakhs elementary teachers, 7.2 lakhs secondary teachers, 12.6 lakhs FLN teachers, and around 1.2 lakhs ECCE uh, workers uh, or professionals have been uh, trained. Then continuous uh, uh, professional development courses. So in that aspect, 3,67,657 uh, certificates have been issued by CIT and CRT. 
Then MOOCs for school education is another CPD uh, which is done in which 370,000 students were included uh, and the teachers and parents and civil ser service aspirants are also the users of these uh, MOOCs for school education. So online capacity building on ET and ICT is also uh, taken care of by CIT and CRT. And in that, four lakhs plus certificate have been issued. And total number of webinars that have been carried out are 837. Maybe this number might have increased uh, by uh, a few more numbers because we do it on a continuous basis. Uh, next, please. So uh, this is the details of Nishtha courses for elementary level. So 18 for elementary, 12 courses for secondary, 12 for FLN, and six courses for ECCE have been designed and disseminated to the number of teachers. You can see 42 lakhs for elementary, 7.2 lakhs for secondary, 12.6 lakhs for uh, FLN and uh, 0.15 lakhs for ECCE. And uh, Nishta Elementary is disseminated in 11 languages, secondary in 10 languages, FLN in 11 languages, and ECCE in two languages. Next, please. So this is the screenshot of Swayam. We can skip it. Next slide. So this is of ICT curriculum. Next. This is uh, the guidelines for cyber safety and security and e-content development. You can see the screenshot. You can access them from CIET and CRT's website. So these are some of the standards that we have set for uh, digital education which I mentioned uh, in uh, the, um, uh, the the earlier slides where one of the NEP deliver uh, deliberation is to set standards of everything in the area of digital education and other aspects as well. Next, please. So these are guidelines for cyber safety and security. So, ye hum skip kar sakte. so these are some of the national and international collaborations. So you can see here uh, uh, our international and national collaborations. Excuse we me, are collaborating with. Yes, please. Uh, Ma'am, one of the participant has uh, requested, if possible, um, to slow down. We will share the presentation with you. I think now the presentation is already covered. So uh, we will share the presentation. If they have any query, because I have now uh, already covered the um, presentation, have any query they can ask uh, in the group or also they can uh, go through the presentation. Okay. So uh, we have collaborated with the Mauritius, uh, Bhutan, Nepal, South Korea, Finland, and also you can see uh, some of the national organizations with which we um, collaborated. Ganpat University, Google, Step, UNESCO, UNICEF, Amrita Institute, CDEC, Sri Shakti Sai Vidya Vahini and HP. So these are some of our national collaborations. Next. Next slide. So these are some of the awards and appreciations that we have received. Next. So uh, I have done with my presentation. So Alok uh, and uh, Nidhi Anna. So when we have to come uh, uh, back after the tea break, so please yes. declare the tea break and tell uh, them uh, time to come back. So it is 11.25. So maybe we can call them at... 